Hello everyone, thank you for your support for the July Tournament Roundup videos about the only sumo coverage you could possibly have got in any language while both wrestlers and journalists were on summer vacation. But I finally have some news stories to bring you today. Firstly, the battle lines are being drawn between health professionals and sumo chiefs ahead of September. With virus infections out of control and the government's narrative smashed to smithereens, the Japan Medical Association has called for venues such as the Kokugikan to be converted into emergency treatment centers. However, Sumo Press Chief Shibatayama is adamant that Sumo must come first. September tickets are on sale as usual, and attempts to ban fans from attending will be resisted. Look at our proud record of staging large-scale fan events, Shibatayama boasts. Zero infections in seven tournaments, apparently. For the record, Tokyo infections now average well over 4,000 per day, with the number of tests, according to these websites, still six to eight times lower than the UK and France. The wrestlers, we learned in a tiny report buried inside Sankei Sports, received their second jabs while the Olympics were underway in early August. We presume their coaches did so too. However, coach Hatachiyama of Kasugano Stable did test positive last week, meaning all must stay on their guard. There will now be a round of PCR tests conducted ahead of the next interstable practice session, scheduled from Monday to Thursday next week at the Kokugikan. Let's see if a decent number of prominent names actually show an interest this time. Our wrestlers have also undergone their regular health checks this week, just after which Tamawashi declared himself the latest Mongolian-born fighter to apply for Japanese citizenship. I want to give something back to Sumo, he said of his aspirations to coach. But that's something further down the line. For now, I want to do all I can in the ring and continue refining my Sumo. The top division's oldest man truly sparkled in July. If you've not seen the tribute video, the link is above. One question worth pondering is, where will Tamawashi coach? There are only four wrestlers alongside him at Katao Nami Stable, two of whom are 16 and 15 and might run away at any time. One stable with number problems has already folded. Kagamiyama, the idyllic sumo base near the gently flowing stream, announced its closure on July 21st after 51 years in business. In its most recent form, it was founded by the ex-Yokozuna Kashiwado, famed rival of Taiho, then inherited by his leading student, Tagaryu, who took 17 years to train up a salaried wrestler in Mongolian Kagamiyo. This is actually my only picture of him, and yes, that is a 21-year-old Tedonofuji, three men to the left as we look. Except for the couple of weeks in 2019 when Kakuryu and two others lodged there after the death of coach Izutsu, for the past 13 years, amazingly, the stable has survived with just Kagamiyo and one other wrestler, the master's son, Ryusei. They and the staff will now join Nishikigi and co. at Isenoumi stable. In other news, Hakuho apparently was considered for an Olympic role, according to organizers. His name came up as a candidate for the final group of torch relay runners inside the stadium at the opening ceremony but was dropped some time before. The reason given is unconvincing though. Nikan Sports claims it was because wrestlers who withdraw from tournaments should not be showing up at other events, as Asashoryu did 14 summers ago. But as you all saw, Hakuho had returned to the ring with a vengeance by the time of the opening ceremony. Sumo just didn't fit the all-singing, all-dancing, all-modern image they wished to project, I guess. Perhaps, at least partly in response, the sport is trying to update its image by attracting a broader range of fans. Sumo Chiefs announced on Tuesday the launch of a brand new Sumo Official Fan Club, offering access to priority tickets, VIP events, and limited goods, among other things. 
There are five grades of membership to apply for, the lowest around $60 a year, and the highest, of course entitled Yokozuna, over $3,000 a year. And entitling 30 wealthy members to a metal membership card, signed rankings charts, New Year's cards, and birthday greetings from favorite wrestlers and coaches. I'm sure they'll be grateful for the added workload. I understand what Sumo is trying to do, but it must be careful not to break the more authentic links between stables and neighborhood fans, and wrestlers and their hometowns, which see genuine, passionate support transferred from father to son and mother to daughter. Finally, Takatoriki claims he is about to be sued by the Sumo Association for a number of YouTube posts deemed to be defamatory. It really is take your pick. A recent one suggested that the names of at least 10 salaried wrestlers have been linked to pot smoking, and that the official story behind Takagenji's dismissal simply does not add up. When my boy Roho and his brother Hakurozan got done for drug use in 2008, there were around 20 other wrestlers who were using but not punished, Takatoriki claims. And some of them even peed into a condom and pricked it with a toothpick to allow only a filtered urine sample to trickle out. How can it be, added his YouTube guest and ex-stablemate Gordo Riki, that a low-ranked hairdresser can directly approach senior board member Oguruma, say, can I have a word? and convince him to investigate Takagenji. If I had tried something like that when I was wrestling, that board member would have told me where to go, and even yelled at my coach for allowing me to be so impudent. Sumo is a very strict hierarchy, that's how it works. Exactly, chimed in ex-wrestler Muso Riki. If the hairdresser story is true, why don't I approach Coach Oguruma with the ten names of alleged pot smokers? Do you think he'd investigate? Well, I guess he'd pick and choose. <laughs>